Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. It's no secret the Vikings are great on water, but the question is often floated, which do you pick, the longboat or war galley? Do you stay tied to the galley line that you may have massed in feudal, or rock the boat by going with your unique unit? As you'd probably expect, it's not quite as simple as one or the other. So for this video, we'll look into what are the factors to consider so you can be sure to better navigate the decision in your next game. Let's dive in. We'll start off in Castle Age, as that's when the longboat is unlocked. Comparing their stats at a glance to the War Galley, the two are almost indistinguishable with the same attack, armor, and range. In fact, the only obvious difference is 5 HP. Keep in mind the Vikings have a 15% discount on warships in Castle Age, but their longboat is 10% more wood and 65% more gold for what looks like an identical or slightly worse unit. The longboat of course fires multiple arrows, though notably not all of those arrows are equal. One of the four is the main arrow carrying the longboat's displayed attack as well as plus 9 hidden damage against ships, while the other three do just one damage to any target, even after blacksmith and other upgrades. Those three extra arrows aren't even guaranteed to land either, and watching for any amount of time you'll notice they miss fairly often, even at relatively close range. Another significant difference compared to the galley line is in their creation time. Longboats are created in 25 seconds as opposed to 36, making this one of only a few cases where it's actually easier to mass a unique unit than its generic counterpart. The longboat is also about 8% faster, which makes it better at both hit and run as well as being able to avoid any fights you don't want to take. A notable exception to that is demo ships, which do slightly outpace them. And finally, an even more subtle hidden difference is that the longboat is treated by the game as being smaller than the war galley, so they pack much tighter together. Generally, that's an advantage on large scales, as they can enter a fight more cleanly and not bump into each other or get trapped behind their own line quite as often. Getting as many units involved and firing as early as possible can actually be quite a large advantage and help snowball a fight. But now let's put it together and see how the Longboat and War Galley compare against a variety of ship types they might encounter, and when each of the two is giving better value. Now I am going to rely a lot on tests using basic patrolling, and admittedly that undersells how much smoother the Longboat is to control. They're basically the Kipchaks of the sea. Easy to hit and run at the edge of your enemy's range, they pack together nicely so you can get a lot of them firing at once, they're smaller so you can more easily dodge incoming shots even with ballistics by changing directions, and their wider spread of arrows can even help bring down multiple enemy ships at once. These are all important factors to consider on top of how they perform with patrol. To start off, against generic war galleys head to head, they're basically evenly matched. To go a bit deeper, at medium range I found over 2 minutes there was only a modest 7% higher damage output by the longboat as most of the damage is coming from the main arrow and its plus 9 bonus against ships. Remember, the longboat also has 5 less HP and the multiple arrows even slightly decrease their attack rate. Altogether though, with equal numbers it's basically a wash and they'll trade one for one. Even accounting for the longboat's slightly higher cost, 15 versus 16 they're basically an even match against generic war galleys before micro. The longboat isn't floundering here, but the extra arrows really don't seem to be adding very much either. Don't forget though, Vikings don't have generic war galleys, they get them 15% cheaper in Castle Age. Accounting for that and assuming it allows you to create proportionally more units, it's an easy stomp for discounted Viking war galleys. It should go without saying that Viking war galleys likewise perform very well against Viking longboats head to head when cost is factored in. As a side note, because of their longer creation time, you would need more docks to sustain war galleys than longboats given the same economy. Now with micro on the open water, I actually think many players could win with the longboats in that situation, depending on how much space you had and time you're willing to focus on doing that. So far, the cheaper galley line feels like the easier path to victory, but what about against fire ships? Intuitively, the longboat's extra arrows should perform well against a high pierce armor target. It turns out they do between 0 and 60% more damage depending on how many arrows land, which in turn depends on distance. They're definitely better, but maybe not as overpowering as you'd expect seeing all of their extra arrows. Of course, neither unit is cost efficient against fire ships without micro, but that might be missing the point and expecting too much. Against a modest number of fire ships, there's a very obvious difference, and you need significantly fewer longboats to reach the critical mass where you can one-shot enemy fire ships. Longboats have a notable edge here over the galley line, and that's even before using your extra mobility. To complete the water trident now, what about the demolition ship? Longboats initially look good, taking them out one shot sooner, but I think that's a bit misleading. In this case, their better stacking works against them, and more expensive, tightly packed units is exactly what demo ships are looking for. A big demo shot is much more costly to a group of longboats than war galleys, as more units are hit, they have less HP, and they also cost more per unit. 
That's unfortunate, as longboats are otherwise quite good at taking out dogs. The extra arrows do some serious work here, though of course you need to keep a sharp lookout for enemy demo ships. Both units also share the same plus 9 bonus damage against fishing ships, but longboats take them out one shot sooner, making them again more potent at raiding, especially when you think about how quickly they can escape as well. Another unit that came to mind is the ram, which is sometimes used to draw ship fire in shallows. In that case, longboats are better, but maybe not by as much as you'd think. Both units have plus 4 attack against rams, and longboats only end up doing about 50% more damage overall. It's something, but it's not the 4 times damage that you might have expected at first glance. So overall, in Castle Age, it is a bit of a difficult choice. The longboat has almost everything in its favor, from faster creation time, more damage output against fire ships and buildings, faster movement, and better stacking. But at the end of the day, you're paying significantly more for that. It's definitely worth it against fire ships and docks, but against enemy war galleys, it might just be easier to win through cost efficiency. The exception would be if for some reason you needed to build up your numbers quickly, in which case the quick creation time makes it easier to flood the map with waves of longboats. But now let's drift our attention to the Imperial Age, and what if anything changes when both units are fully upgraded? In both cases, the Galleon and Elite Longboat upgrades add 30 HP, 1 attack, 2 pierce armor, and 1 range. Below the surface, it also adds a hidden plus 2 damage against ships, and one more against buildings as well. Their stats remain basically identical, still with only a 5 HP difference, though of course the longboat retains its faster movement, creation time, etc. Both upgrades take about a minute to research at the dock, though curiously you pay much more for the longboats. It's almost double the food and nearly 500 gold instead of around 300 wood. That's a lot of resources to sink into upgrades if you wanted to get both in early Imperial. Keep in mind the Vikings discount increases in Imperial Age from 15% to 20% for both units. That may seem like a growing advantage, but in reality, civilizations that get shipwright can essentially buy the Vikings wood discount, while also lowering the galleon creation time to basically the same as a longboat. Against a civilization with shipwright, some of the Vikings advantages in Imperial Age don't seem like they're increasing, but in fact feel somewhat watered down. Looking at fully upgraded galleons in Imperial Age, one on one the longboat still holds a narrow edge. It's a fragile enough advantage though that with a Civ bonus like Saracen's faster firing or Portuguese with additional HP and armor, it's enough to turn the tide of battle with equal numbers. Without shipwright, a Viking longboat and generic galleon have the same total resource cost, and the longboat's ability to begin a fight more smoothly gives them a bit of an advantage. On a large scale, it's enough of an edge that with nothing but attack move, longboats can win consistently. Against a civilization with shipwright though, longboats lose with equal total resources. Again, in practice, this is going to depend on the skill of the players involved, and if I take control and add a bit of patrol, attack move, and extra movement, I can win the fight with about half the longships left. It's not that they're a terrible choice against galleons, especially if you exploit their hidden strengths, and it's actually kind of fun to do. The easier fight though is to fall back on Vikings discounted galleons, which win convincingly against enemies without shipwright, and still save 6 gold per unit compared to enemies that have it. It just comes down to how hard you want to work for the victory. Based on everything I've seen, it feels again in Imperial Age that fighting the enemy's galleon line with your own as Vikings is the safest play. Of course, in that example, your opponent may respond with fire ships. The situation in Imperial is identical to Castle, where longboats do up to 60% more damage. Especially at close range when most of the extra arrows are landing, that can add up quickly. I wouldn't go overboard and say longboats are a hard counter to fire ships in low numbers, but with a critical mass of 20 or more in the open water, fire ships don't seem that scary. The real fear in Imperial Age for longboats is the heavy demo ship. They have an even larger explosive radius, and with elite longboats packing so tightly together, that's something to be especially mindful of. Again, similar to Castle Age, they do 50% more damage against docks. Destroying docks in particular can be an effective way to capitalize on water control and prevent someone from getting back into the game. So that covers the most common situations you'll run into, but just for completeness sake we'll look at a few more odd cases. It should go without saying that against cannon galleons head to head, you'll do more than fine with either longboats or galleons. Cannons are primarily for shore bombardment, and definitely not naval combat. Against turtle ships, of course, normally you would kite them with your extra range, and longboats in fact need to do that with balanced resources in order to win. Discounted Viking galleons, on the other hand, can actually take that fight head to head with equal resources. As for the caravel, it's roughly the same cost as a longboat in Imperial at 10 more wood and 6 less gold. This matchup depends on how many ships the caravel are able to skewer, as one on one the longboat is stronger and wins with around a third of its HP left. 
Again, the tightly packed units might be working against the longboat here, and staggered formation would probably help avoid some of the caravels pass through damage. So just to wrap up and summarize, the longboat is more expensive and takes significantly more attention to be cost effective against the war galley and galleon. If those are the primary units you're encountering, the easiest approach is to mirror that choice, backed by your discount and strong Viking economy. Against fire ships though, longboats are the clear choice. The longboat offers lots of advantages, like faster movement and creation, it's better at stacking, and performs much better against high pierce armor targets. But just be prepared to sink quite a bit more gold and attention into them. But that's all for this one. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.